Welcome to VCC TV. Today we have with us again Mr. Ashish Kalra, Chairman of Cambridge Technology Enterprises, but this time for a completely different reason. Last time when we talked to Mr. Kalra, he was talking about the Innovation Fund and how Cambridge Technology Enterprises is going to change the big data and analytics industry. Now he's using that to build up new technologies, build up new startups. Thanks for coming on the show, Ashish. Thank you. Good to see you again. Same thing. Ashish, let's start with the CTE performance. Has it been up to the mark till now? I think it's going according to plan. Everything has challenges, but you know, we are happy with where we are. We've our objective was to get to a million dollars a month. Still is the objective by March of sixteen, mm -hmm. and two million a month by March of seventeen. We're on track to doing that. Uh, we've increased revenues 100% from same quarter in 14 to the same quarter in 15. Uh, and I think that's kind of the barrier to growth. It's harder growing faster than that. The main challenge remains, and I think will remain for the long term, is recruiting the right talent, training them. We are looking at new technologies. You're looking at people who think outside the box, who are innovators, who are problem solvers, and that's not something you get easily. Last time we talked around, we were talking about how startup culture is picking up in India. And you had said that once you had invested in India and now you seemed a bit more uh, reserved for investing again. What about the idea of Cambridge Innovation Fund? Cambridge Innovations is born out of three distinct pillars. The first is, in order for us to recruit better talent and train better talent, the best way to do it is have them work on live projects. And the bigger companies tend to adopt technologies when they are commercialized. They will not be working on the bleeding edge. Whereas the innovators, the disruptors in cloud and big data at the convergence point are going to do exactly that. So the first is that. The second is we need to find the right revenue. It's not revenue for the sake of revenue. And the best revenue, again, we can find is by incubating our own clients, because it's the work we want to do. It's where we want to go. And the third is it makes a lot of sense to make the investments. Now, it is a US-centric business. Our investments, even now, are US investments. Mm -hmm. uh, we believe there's tremendous up upside in that. Uh, the US creates almost 50,000 com new companies a year. It's the biggest innovation market there is. We have been in that market for a few decades, right? At least two decades now. We've had relative success there. We know the people, we know the deal flow. And thirdly, if you look at it, if you had a portfolio of 50 companies, which is what we're trying to build here over the next three years, the average venture capital return over the last 30 years has handsomely beat the S&P. Right? So it makes a lot of sense from revenue, from investments, from people perspective, and that's why we are pursuing this. Now, we've talked about the portfolio right now, and you just mentioned it. Taking from that, what is the, oh, you're looking at 50 companies as a portfolio. What's the corpus of the fund? Right, before I get to the corpus, let's define what are the, what's the kind of company we want to invest in and what really rocks our boat, right? So the, the company has to achieve three things for us. One, it has to be in the broad area of cloud and big data. Two, it has to be transformative and disruptive. And three, it has to have the unique technologies we want to pursue. Now, typically when we engage with these companies, they're at a seed stage. At a seed stage, typically they're raising roughly a million dollars, plus minus 250. Mm -hmm. And we'll take up to 25% of the round, okay. right? So that's how we look at the investment model, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so the corpus is very flexible based on the quality of deal flow we see. Mm -hmm. When we do the deal flow, our targets right now are by March of 17 to have a portfolio of 12 companies, mm -hmm. of which three are already in the portfolio, mm -hmm. and over three years build a portfolio of 50 companies. Mm -hmm. 
right? We don't think we can handle more than that. More than money, our main issue today is how do we become their partners? How do we build a strategic framework for these guys? How do we engage on a two-year plan? And plans change, you know, needs change. And we, I don't know the impact right now on the organization. How, can, how many can we support? So it's not a money constraint, it's actually a people constraint that the market will tell us. Once we had a dozen companies, we'll be able to extrapolate a lot better. Again, coming back to the same question, because this is something that viewers would be actually more interested in. Yes. Right. Can we comfortably say that 50 million is what you're going to start with, given that 1 million seed stage investment into each company? Actually, it'll be a quarter of that, 12 and a half. 12 and a half. Because we do up to 25%. Perfect. Now, going forward, these are three very different areas that you've entered. Right? Yes. In US, there's a completely different market than there is in India. Yes. Would this fund be focused to India as well? And if yes, how much of this would be allocated to India and how much to US? The companies are different in their uses. They're very similar in how they're adopting technology, mm -hmm. right? To your next question, do we invest in India or US? We are a global company, we will see deals everywhere. Having said that, we have a predisposition to invest in the United States for three reasons. One, that's where we've built our careers, that's where our relationships are, that's the market we know. Yeah. Number two, it is the biggest market in the world. Mm -hmm. Nothing can change it. Yeah. We get lower valuations there than India. Mm -hmm. We get better teams, right? India today is focused on, it reminds me of when I used to do dot-com investing in the US, it reminds me of that. Everyone's chasing a unicorn. Yeah. Unicorns is not what builds a business. We are B2B guys, we are enterprise guys, we build enterprise solutions. And these companies sell for hundreds of millions, billions of dollars, but they're not your Uber or Alibaba or Google. Mm -hmm. They'll never be. India doesn't have the maturity to be in that space today. I'm not saying nothing will be created. The issue is how much time and effort am I willing to spend to find that one? Mm. If we do do India, we'll probably do it indirectly. We'll probably invest in people who are investing in people so that we see the deal flow and we can then curate the deal flow. It's very rarely that you find deals like Prop Tiger, where we are investors, not at Cambridge Technology, but through my family, mm -hmm. you know, we were one of the original investors in that deal. Yeah. But there are, there are only that many throughs. Lastly, I firmly believe, I'm not sure if the market believes this, I believe this, that if CTE does what it's doing, and it does it well, and it can create the razor fish around innovation, it will be one of the only avenues Indians can invest in US innovation. That makes us rare. Mm -hmm. CTE investing in a small pond in India, there's enough people investing and you have access to those guys, yeah. right? So it's not about chasing unicorns, but does big data and analytics have the capability, companies have the capability to become unicorns? in the coming years? Absolutely. I mean, Michael Dell recently said it's a trillion dollar market. I think he understated it. Because if you just look at, you name just a few companies today that have been disruptive in the convergence of cloud and big data, Uber, it's worth 60 billion, mm -hmm. Salesforce. You know, you add these up, they, you're already at a trillion. And the market's just begun, you know. I think it'll be very disruptive. Now, taking from that point, would, see now, you're investing about 25% in the seed capital basis. Yes. Would there be an integration going forward within the Cambridge Technology Enterprises framework once the company reaches a certain stage? So instead of going out, you actually take the company inside your own framework? Not in this framework. In innovations, we are only investing in third-party companies at arm's length that they can become our clients. 
It's kind of like what McKinsey did very well is, is place partners everywhere so they become McKinsey clients. Mm -hmm. If we have set their v technology visions, we have built it. So I'll give you an example. This idea was born from a real example. One of the larger clients at Cambridge Technology today is Schneider Electric. Mm -hmm. Schneider Electric became a client of Cambridge because they helped a company called Summit Energy, which was maybe 30 people strong when they met them and helped them create a business plan, helped them build their vision out. Because they were there from inception and the same management sold for 300 million to Schneider, CTE became the people who have serviced them instead of Infosys or Cognizant, etc. Mm -hmm. Same thing here, right? Except in this case, we also have equity now. Right? In the past, we never took the equity. You never ran it as a business. It just happened in chance that they did this and they did another company called Geo Estimator yeah. as well, which also got sold. So th that's really our perspective on the world. Are there companies that we may create on our own? Absolutely. Will we do it today? Absolutely not because we are focused on building a company already, right? That has targets to be two million a month in revenue by March 17. That is a company we're building. We think that company itself should be worth a lot. But along the way, as we get towards two million or at two million and we at scale, maybe they are product ideas, maybe they're service ideas. Maybe IBM Watson, the artificial intelligence program takes off. Maybe that's a spin-off. Right? Too early to tell. We have to build the foundations. The reason we are building this today is it helps us build the foundation for that core business. Right? We cannot dilute the focus on that. We just don't have enough management time or bandwidth today. Not talking about the US market in general. A lot of people are chasing unicorns. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are worried about unicorns mm -hmm. entering into the public market and not getting the valuations that were once perceived. Yes. There's talks about bubbles, there's talks about bursts. What is mm -hmm. your take on that? I've done this now for two decades, right? Uh, markets go up, markets go down. I was reading a Wall Street Journal article that said, I could be wrong on the number, but something like 90% of all IPOs that have been done over the last 12 months or so have been priced lower than the last private round. Yeah. I'm not talking about where the share price ended up. Mm -hmm. It's been priced. So obviously there is some egregious um, element to the pricing in the private rounds. But there's also a lot more money. We never used to have this much money when I first was a partner at a venture fund in 95. You know, a hundred million dollar fund was a big fund. Mm -hmm. Today everyone seems to have a few billion. They all are writing large checks. Then you have the non-VC guys writing the checks, the PE guys, the hedge funds. Then you have the strategics, Alibaba, SoftBank. Yeah. It's a crowded space. The large check space is actually a very crowded space. How many companies are there that you can write a single $100 million check or $250 million check? They're very few. And I think to some extent, the valuations are being created because there's a wall of money that needs to have those valuations. You want to put a $250 million check, you can only put a $250 million check if you value the company at a billion. Mm -hmm. You can't put $250 million at a dollar, right? Yeah. And some of it is you've actually seen companies create the value, right? Amazon created value. Google's created value. Now you've also seen companies like Netscape and everyone else that have completely disappeared. Mm -hmm. So I think there'll be a new mix because the people playing the game are different. The VCs have gone from managing 100 million to a few billion. The PE guys have come downstream. The hedge funds are saying we'll do it directly. The high net worth individuals are playing it. But one thing is clear, everyone is saying Innovation is the only bet you have against inflation or against downturns. That is clear in everyone's mind. Everyone's understood that. So here was a very closed industry 
you know, with a few hundred or a few thousand people, now that is becoming broad appeal. It's kind of like how no one used to invest in the stock market and now you have 30% of the population. Yeah. Same thing. But if you look at it, for a company drawing higher and higher valuation in each round, mm -hmm. isn't it difficult for the company going forward when it goes to the IPO, the actual market valuation comes into play and you realize the company was not worth what it was? Yes. Secondly, with the flush of money that there is, and there are people writing these checks, right? these people, when they go to the market, they don't get the returns that they want. So is that bubble, if you call it a bubble, going to burst in recent mm -hmm. times? Or is it just the overheated market that's going to cool down? I, I don't think it's either of the two. I, I think it's just the market is going through a transformation. You have new players who are entering. Some will be good, they'll be very good. You take SoftBank, all it takes is one Alibaba, right? They've done it well, they've done Yahoo before that. So they are obviously better than other people, right? Mm -hmm. The other guys who are writing the checks for the first time, we don't know, time will tell. But the market is transforming to what used to be a select group of people mm -hmm. who played in the market to a broader group of people playing in that market. Do they have the expertise? I don't know. We don't play that market. We don't know that market. It's not a market. We're not writing even a $10 million check or a $5 million. I'm saying, look, we are doing, where there's a vacuum today is no one's really doing seed. Mm -hmm. If you aren't doing seed, who's going to create the funnel? Right? You have, that's why people like Y Combinator have been so successful because they've entered that vacuum. Everyone who did seed deals was a $50 million fund or a $100 million. They no longer are doing seed. They're a $500 million fund. They're doing Series A. They're writing $5 million, $10 million checks. Now, the unfortunate problem is, having run money earlier, is the model is not a good model on how money is managed. Unfortunately, we don't have a better, better model. Mm -hmm. You're getting 2% roughly on corpus under management, then you get 20% of carry. At some point, if you're managing 10 billion, the 2% is 200 million a year. Yeah. You really don't care about the 20%, right? The numbers start getting to a point. Now you're listing your private equity firms. You want predictability. Guess what you'll focus on? Is that management fee, the guaranteed management. So the industry will transform, but what will not transform is how businesses are created. They'll always, you need an entrepreneur who believes in the inevitability of success. As I always say, and it's too dumb to die, right? Everyone will tell him your idea doesn't work, someone else can do it better, but he's there to disrupt and transform. That person needs a partner today, needs capital today, and that's the market we live and breathe, and that's the market we enjoy. Going back to the first round where we started with Cambridge Innovations, and this is my last question. What kind of companies would you be looking at? You've done three. There are nine left for this year. What kind of portfolios are you looking at specifically? Is it in the health tech sector? Is it just a wide variety of things? Oh. Is it actually big data analytics in yes. itself? What are you looking at? Three things. It has to be disruptive and transformative will probably be in the enterprise space, will be at the convergence of cloud and big data. It will cover a wide gamut of things, but underlying it, it'll be the technologies we want to work with. We back great people in markets we like, that are large markets. Once they're in the race, they bob, they weave, they end up at a point, they succeed. Right? But if you don't have great people, it doesn't matter. If I invested at a half a million dollar valuation or I got 50% for it, makes no difference. You earn 50% of zero. Right? Yeah. So you want great people, you want to pick big markets, and then you want to unleash the power of disruption. Perfect. Thank you. Thanks a lot for your time. Thank you. As Hope always. To see you again next year. Love to.
with those 12 portfolio companies and we'll talk about more about India and US. Thank you. Thank